Cool. Okay, that elusive A's and A stars. Mm. So in this video, I'm going to go through the revision method that I did when I was in my GCSEs and A-levels that got me the A's and A stars. Well, actually, technically, we didn't have A star back then in A-level, but if you look at the percentage, it would have been an A star if we had A star then. Hopefully, this video will give you guys good value in what you can do in terms of your revision techniques because it's not always about working hard. You have to work hard, but you've got to work smart. And if you're able to combine both of them, it's a lot less stress, a lot less pressure. And people just keep thinking like, oh, I'm working 10, 12 hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. But how many hours are you actually working that is quality and actually smart? So this video, I'm gonna show you the methods that I've done and hopefully you can take something out of it. And if it does, please leave a like, subscribe. I don't even like saying that, leave a like and subscribe. Sounds so cheap, doesn't it? I don't do it. Listen, only do it if you find it useful, okay? The first one is understand what you're doing. A lot of us, even myself, I made this mistake so many times. I thought that I understood something when really I wasn't understanding it, I just memorized it. And it's very, very different. Like understanding and memorizing are two different things. Let me explain. When you understand something, you actually remember it for a very, very long time because it clicks, it's in your head. But when you memorize something, maybe at best, you probably can remember it for a week and then after that, you just completely forgot everything. You guys see that? Like, think about it for yourself. Where when you understood something and when you memorized it, which one can you recall for a long time? The bit that you've understood, right? So you have to understand it. And the reason why you have to do this is, for example, in maths, chemistry, or even physics, there's going to be a lot of theory there where you need to understand how to apply the theory. Because when you memorize something, you're not really getting the whole works, the whole mechanics behind it. And when it comes to exam questions, you're not going to be able to answer it because you actually don't understand the theory. Try and understand what you're doing, especially with maths, physics, chemistry to a certain level you're not going to be able to get good grades if you just memorize. You will need to understand the theory behind it and know how to apply it. So one way of doing this that you guys can see if you're understanding or memorizing is when you're doing questions, try and pick questions that are different. Don't try and do questions that are similar. Try and pick questions that are different and then you will see if you really understand the material. Because if you understand the material, your brain should be able to think in a different way. Okay, this is the theory I've learned. Okay, how am I gonna now apply this to this different exam question or this, this different practice question? That's a great way for you guys to test that. So that's the first method. Try and understand what you're doing because you will save a lot of time and effort um, in not having to revise again and again. Because once you get it, you get it. Trust me, it's in your head. You don't need to go through it again. The second method is practice questions. When you're doing questions, you want to make sure that you cover all the topics that you are revising for. So before even getting into the exam questions, what I did was do topic tests, like end of topic tests. I'm sure you guys have that, right? So if you, for example, for maths, you might have probability, algebra, whatever, all these different topics, go and do those questions first before doing exam questions. Physics, biology, chemistry, do those topics first. Now, the reason why I say this is when you start doing exam questions, trust me, this is going to happen to you if it hasn't. It happened to me so many times. Most of the time, you're not going to be able to answer a lot of these questions because you're like, whoa, whoa, what the heck? This is your first time seeing an exam question, right? For the first time, I'm not saying that when you're doing it again and again. The first time you do these exam questions for these different subjects, you're going to be taken a bit back and you're going to feel a bit demotivated. Like, oh my gosh, I don't understand. That is okay. That is okay. That's what's meant to happen. And when you go and do exam questions, have an open book, okay? Don't try and do it without any books. Try and have it with an open book. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's not about really answering the exam questions, right? Of course it is. But the first time, what you want to do is you want to recall, okay, what topic is this exam question asking me to use? So you want to recall the topic. That's the first exercise. That's the first step that you want to do. It's going to help your brain to figure out, okay, what topic do I need? And if you're worried like, oh my gosh, I can't remember the topic. This is bad. No, no, no. Don't worry. Just have the book there and say, okay, for example, I don't know, molecular structure and chemistry or whatever it is, you can be like, okay, this is asking me on this topic. So let me look at that and say, oh, okay, this is what I need to use. That is the first step. And that is very, very positive. Okay. When you're doing exam questions for the first time, a lot of people just put so much pressure thinking that they have to get it right the first time. No, it's not going to work like that. Most 99% of the time that I did exam questions for the first time, I did not get it right. Right. It took me some time to just understand what is happening. And that's why I had an open book trying to figure out, okay, which topics do I need to use? And if I can't remember the topic, I'll look at it. But the reason why you're doing this is so that you're practicing your brain, your mind to realize, okay, these are the topics that I need to use for this exam question. And then when you do the exam questions again, the next time and next time and next time, you don't need the books, 
right? These are methods that you can use that relieves the pressure and reduces your stress. You don't need to be going all in thinking like, okay, I revise all the topics and that's it, I'm going in and I'm good. It's not gonna work like that. You're gonna be very disappointed. If you do and you're able to answer all the questions, then I don't know, man, you are, what did he, what did he, what do you, what do you guys call it now? Neek, is that the word, neek? <laughs> That's what the students were saying. I don't know, is it neek or nerd? I don't know, put it down in the comments, I have no idea. Yes, so with exam questions, listen, take it one step at a time and before you know it, trust me, you're gonna glide through it and it's gonna become an easier process for you guys. Also, when you're doing practice questions and exam questions, look at the marking scheme, it's very, very important because you wanna know what kind of methods they are expecting you to write and the kind of description or sentences or paragraphs that they want to answer the questions that you're doing. So that when you're seeing this, you're able to see, okay, when I see questions like this or something similar, these are the kind of methods that they want. That's very, very important. Numero trois, the third method, sorry, it's a bit of French coming there, is memorizing smartly. Like I was saying just before, right? You need to understand what you're doing. But there's certain things, certain topics, certain subjects where memorizing is the best way to go. For example, biology, right? Biology is more theoretical subject. So subjects that have a lot more theory, you wanna try and memorize as much as you can. Now, that doesn't mean just literally read line by line and try and memorize that. No, no, no. What you wanna do is you wanna memorize smartly in a way where you're still able to understand the certain concepts. But for example, when it comes to definitions or when it comes to give me examples of this or that, those are things that you can memorize. And people make the mistake where they try and cram everything in at night or like, you know, the day before, week before, and that's not gonna work. And the reason that's not gonna work is you're gonna have to come back to that material again, okay? Which means that when you try to cram everything in one go, your brain is gonna be absolutely smushed. Like it's gonna go just, it's too much. So the smart way of memorizing this, and this is what I did is repetition. So at the beginning, like maybe you set aside one hour, 30 minutes, whatever the subject is, you memorize, you read and you do that for one day and then you repeat that for the next day, you read that for the next day, you repeat that for the next day. Without you even realizing, you are already taking the information in. That's a small way of doing it because when you repeat again and again and again and again, you're gonna get it, it's easier, it becomes easier as opposed to cramming everything in. Some people are very good at that, don't get it twisted, like some people can actually cram everything in that. I can't do that, man, I'm not that person. So for me, it's like, listen, you do that, there's no way, what you're doing, man, my brain's gonna go. So I had to find another way of being more efficient with how I memorize things. And literally, memorizing for me is the worst thing ever. I can't memorize to save my life. Like my memory is really bad when I'm trying to memorize things. So that's why I had to do this repetition and I learned that, okay, if I do this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like repeating again and again, it becomes a lot easier. And uh, yeah, that's something that you guys can do when you're memorizing certain things. Be smart about it. And the last one is, I feel one people don't really talk about because it's a bit deep and people just don't like deep conversations, I guess, I don't know. But it's self-awareness. Let me explain. When you're doing revision, when you're revising, you also wanna be able to take a step back and see, okay, what exactly are you doing right and what exactly are you doing wrong? And that comes from being self-aware because it's so easy to get magnified in the revision, in the studies, in the stress and the pressure that you don't actually, need, you don't realize some of the things that you're doing wrong. Like maybe from someone else, like from a third person, whether it's your family, your friends, they could be looking at you and be like, oh, hold up, you're doing this wrong, this wrong, but you can't realize that because you're so in it. And it's so important sometimes just to take a step back when you're revising and say, okay, how is my revision going? Am I making progress? Am I doing things right? Am I doing certain things wrong? If I'm doing certain things wrong, what can I do to improve? That is so important. Self-awareness, not just with GCSE A-levels, even after university life, like I'm even now very, very self-aware of what I do. That's why probably I'm quite a deep individual, but that's because I'm also, I look at myself, I always look at myself and the things I do wrong and the things I do right. It is such an important skill that people do not talk about. When you're self-aware, whether it's even time management in terms of like how much time are you putting on certain subjects, do you need to put that much time in certain subjects? These things are very, very good and vital information for you guys when you're revising. For example, let's use this as an example. You're revising for three hours on, I don't know, biology or chemistry and then you're spending like one hour on, I don't know, history or maths. And to you, you might think like, okay, this is great, I'm doing work, right? But maybe to someone else, like me coming in, I'm, I would probably ask you, okay, why are you spending three hours on history? Or as opposed to one hour on maths. Now you might say, okay, history is your weak subject, which if it is, fine, that's definitely makes sense. 
But I would even then say is, okay, are you going to keep doing three hours for the rest of you know, your revision? Because then you need to start adjusting. You don't need to be paying three hours every single time. I know it's a weak subject, but that's why at the beginning you pull off time. Once you're able to get past that, you can start reducing that time. And see, that comes from being self-aware. If you're able to do these little tweaks here and there, trust me, your revision will be a lot better. So yeah, those are the methods that really help me. And listen, you don't need to listen to what other people are doing. Literally, look at you. You know yourself very well, okay? What's your strengths, what your weaknesses are. It's so easy for someone else on the outside to say, oh, you're doing this wrong, you should be doing this. Yeah, shut up, man. You do what you wanna do. I know what I need to do and I need to focus on myself. That's the most important thing because once you start listening to so many people and so many voices outside, it becomes very difficult and you're not gonna get any revision. Focus on what you need to do and just get on with it and see where that gets you. That's what I would say. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out. If you like this, thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Well, actually I said not to give a thumbs up if you don't like it, right? Okay, yeah, cool, 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 cool. Let me know anyway in the comments what other things you guys want me to do. Um, very, very happy to do this. Very, very happy to help you guys out. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.